chapter 2. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 onward. Oh, let's start from verse 11. He said, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his word devices. That is verse what? 11. We are not the ignorant of the devices of the, the devil. Lest the devil should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant. Now I want you to highlight the word ignorant. Ignorant. That is one of the tools that the devil used to operate and to harm the children of God. Say ignorant. Ignorant is a disease and it's a sickness. Ignorant is one of the tools that the devil uses to advance and to take advantage in the life of believers. I title my message Understanding the Devil's Schemes. The Devil's Word Scheme. Or the devil strategies. Every child of God, if you can understand how the devil operates, if you can know the devil, you will know how to escape from all his works. Hallelujah. You will know how to walk, escape. The devil is always very strategic in all the time the bible said it was the angel of life in other words the archangel that was in the go in, in heaven in heaven with god but when something happened he was casted down to the bottomless pit and now he's on earth here roaming around seeking for whom that he may walk he may devour Praise the Lord. When you have knowledge about the devil's works, how the devil operate, you will be able to stand. You will be able to get prepared all the time. You will be able to get ready all the time. You will be able to always be alert and watchful to know whenever the devil is coming your way. Is someone listening to me? Because the devil does not want you to be happy for a single moment. The devil does not want you to smile. The devil does not want you to celebrate. The devil does not want you to be happy for a moment. That is why he walked at about 24 and 247. He never rests. He never takes holiday. He never takes rest. He is walking every minute every hour praise the lord in revelation chapter 2 verse 9 this place revealed to us that the devil that he's a deceiver of the whole earth a deceiver of the whole world after he was casted to the earth with all his fallen angels Every angel have millions of angels that is under them working with them. So when he was dethroned, he was not dethroned alone. His kingdom was totally dethroned. So the devil himself, there are many, not only one. And remember, they are spirit. And you can only confront the things of the spirit when you are what? In the spirit. A man that is in the flesh can never confront the things of the spirit. You can only attack and confront. You can only resolve the issues that are in the spirit. You can only confront the things that are in spirit. When you are in spirit or when you are in the spirit. That's why the Bible said those who worship God must worship him in truth and in what? In spirit. You must be in spirit. You must be in spirit. Now look at it. First Thessalonians 5 17. He encouraged us, Paul encouraged us to pray all time. To pray without ceasing. Why do you need to pray all time? Let me tell you, you don't see what happened in the spiritual realm. But the only way you get a little help is that you are just 
praying and throwing a bullet that is invisible. A bullet to things that are invisible. Hallelujah. Now you are fighting somebody. You don't see the person, but the person is there. Is somebody hearing me? There is somebody standing in front with a sword. With all kinds of equipment. With all kinds of battle equipment. But you don't see it. But he's there. Are you with me? He's there. Invisible. He exists. He's there. And he's touching you. When he touches you, you will feel it. When he touch you, it manifests physically. Are you with me? But you don't see it. I pray that God open your eyes to see. That's the prayer that Elisha prayed. The Bible says when the army of Shira, when they surrounded Elisha's house to invade his house, and Gehazi, the servant, he came to the master. He said, Master, when I looked from the window, I saw that the enemy, they have surrounded your house house and Elisha pray he said Lord open the eyes of my servant that he may see in the spirit hallelujah you can see and when the Lord opened the eyes of Gehazi the servant of Elijah Elisha saw chariot of fire surrounded where the house of Elijah praise the Lord now look at it when we pray in the spiritual realm the Lord cover up and she all with what? Wall of fire. You don't see it, but there is a defense. Are you with me? There is what? A defense. The same thing, if there is no defense, you don't see it. If you have opened the door to the devil, you don't see it. Except you are in the spirit. Except you are in the spirit to know and to detect. Except the spirit of God lives in you and active in you. To detect and to let you know that you have gone short of the glory of God. And therefore, the door for the adversary has opened. In order to invade your house or invade you. So now, that's why Paul highlighted it in Ephesians chapter 6. That our warfare, they are not what? Canal. But they are what? They are spiritual. Hallelujah. It is not physical. It is spiritual. That's why when we always talk about the things of the spirit, people do not understand. People tease, people cast spell, people say all manner of things, people accuse, people say bullshit. The Bible says a common man can never understand the things of the spirit. There is no way you could understand. Except you are in the spirit. Except you give yourself to Holy Spirit in order to lead all your life and your ways. Except you begin to dwell in the Spirit. That is only way you understand. Let me tell you, things of the Spirit is totally different from the things of physical. They are different realm. They have different agenda. Praise the Lord. A kind of man a man that does not have the spirit of God in him or her can never understand. Can never understand. That's why there are languages that you speak sometimes. Eh? The those who are kind of, they don't understand. There are kind of prayer you pray. There are people who do not understand. Eh? And they can never understand it. The you that is in the spirit, you know the prayer you are praying. You know the battle that you are facing. Our battles, they are not for flesh and what? Blood. But they are what? They are spiritual. They are spiritual. They are true prayers. To pull down the stronghold. To wrestle against powers and what? Principalities. And the wicked eh? spirit. Devil is very smart, my brothers. You need to understand the way devil operates. You need to understand the strategies of the devil and his schemes. So that you will always get ready. So that you will always know when the devil is at work, you will know that the devil is well at work. When you know that things are going well, you will know that things are well are going well. When there is a temptation, you know that this is temptation. When there is trouble, you know that this is trouble. 
so that you will not fall. So that you will not what? You will not fall. Hallelujah. In the book of 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it said the rulers of this world has blinded the mind of the people to keep them away from the light of the gospel, from the light of Christ. You can see it. That is why be careful of what you hear. Be careful of those who speak into your life because the devil has blinded many hearts. He has blinded many minds. He wants to keep them away from the light. He wants them to remain in the darkness. He wants to dwell with them. He wants to be their friend. He wants them to become their dwellings. Of course, the devil will never allow you to see light. Because when you see light, the darkness will be what? Exposed. The darkness will be what? Exposed. The devil wants to keep you into the den of light. The devil wants to keep you into the den of adultery and fornication. The devil wants to keep you into the den of atrocity. The devil wants to keep you where your body and the loss of the flesh. You will benefit from it. You will enjoy it. But destruction is nearby. Because he comes, John 10 10, he says, He comes to steal, to kill, and war, and destroy. Praise the Lord. The devil wants to steal from you. He wants to kill. And he wants to destroy. No matter whatever he's giving you at the moment. No matter whatever the sweet word that he's telling you at the moment. The devil, of course, he will lure you. He will entice you. He will tell you sweet things. He will show you the glory. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 1. When Jesus was in the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights. And when Jesus came out. The tempter came. The tempter what? He came. To do what? To devour. To steal. And you know what he does? Look at, look at, look at now what he did to Jesus. He began to show Jesus the glory of the earth. Wait and riches. You can see it. Just to deceive him. But Jesus said, get behind me. Satan. Get what? Behind me. Know the scheme of the devil. Understand the scheme of the devil. Praise the Lord. Don't be enticed with the glory of the earth. Don't get confused. Don't be overwhelmed with the glory that the devil, the treasures, the sweet thing that he show you. There is no way there. Hallelujah. It's just a moment glory or a moment pleasure. I don't call it glory. A moment pleasure. And that will lead to destruction. The Bible says there is a way that seems right. It seems right to you. Very sweet. Very nice. You know, very marvelous. Very happy. Very joyful. And very happy with it. Comfortable. But the end thereof is what? Destruction. Be careful. My brother and my sisters. I have to tell you because this is the word of God. You need to understand this scheme of the devil. What are the ways that devil attack believers? What are those schemes, his strategies? How does devil operate and perform? How did he attack us? And how did devil affect our life? Number one, temptations. The devil is very good at that. The devil will bring temptation. There is something that the Bible says. It says, though you may be tempted, but no temptation shall, walk, shall swallow you. You cannot be tempted more than your faith. What does that mean? It means that temptation will come, but as long as you are in Christ and you carry the Spirit of God, you will surely overcome it. Is somebody hearing me? But when you fall into temptation, my brother and my sisters, I always hear some people, it's a temptation. It's a temptation. It's a temptation, but why do you fall into it? 
Why do you fall into the trap? You remember those times we are in the village. We go to the farm. We go to the bush. Some of you, your experience, even your father also, they, they go to the bush and do what? And set trap for the bush animals. Hallelujah. And when the bush animal enter the trap, the trap will do what? We hold it. Sometimes they die in it. True or not? Sometimes the one that is lucky, either one leg cut off and he escaped. Or one hand cut off and what? Escaped. You see? That means whenever you fall into temptation, there is a damage that you have caused. Or the damage that it has caused you. Are you with me? So it's better not to fall. It's better because the Bible says, whenever the devil comes around, he says, you shall reject him, you shall refuse him, and you shall resist him. And when you refuse and resist him, he will, he flee away. Flee away. But when you fall, Salman, those who carry the notion, let me fall first. Hallelujah. After I will repent, there is it damaged that have been caused. Something has left you. Something has been damaged. Something has been cracked and crushed somewhere. There is a mark that already been there. And that mark remains indelible. Praise the Lord. That is why with all and devil, resist the devil. Continue to rebuke. Continue to resist the devil. Continue to reject all his schemes. Know the strategies of the devil. Know the word, the strategies of the devil. In that Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, Then Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. But the tempter came to tempt him. To tempt him. You can see it. If Jesus can be tempted. Who are you? Temptation comes around our way every day. But you too. You should overcome. You too. You should resist it. You too. You should reject it. Don't let devil to ride you. There is a prayer that we always pray in our morning glory. We always pray and say, devil, you have no hands over my day. You have no hands over my business. You have no hands over my marriage. You have no hands over my family. You have no hands over my going down, my coming. In. Hallelujah. And I also release that prayer to you today. The devil will never have hands over your life. He will never have a place in you. In the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 5 verse 3. The Bible says, Peter said to Ananias, Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the pride of the land which you have sold, you and your wife? Praise the Lord. Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, they were tempted by the devil. A vow which they have made and they sold the land to present all the portion to God. But they withheld some back. Because the devil tempted them. Do not give all this to God. As many always be tempted. Sometimes some people when they are bringing out something to give to God, somebody will whisper to them. Somebody will tell them don't give. Somebody brought a, a, a lady in my office far back years ago. Hallelujah. Foreign from study travel from another country in this church they were in my office and the lady i was watching them the lady wanted to bring something from his her bag you know envelope i was seeing the brother hold the lady hand he hold up very tight he was pressing the handbag i was watching them you know i'm very observant hallelujah that's what they call perversion in my office he hold the woman's hand. Anywhere he's listening to me now, he will know what I'm saying. It was a drama. But I overlooked that side. Praise the Lord. 
Are you overlooking? You see, the Bible says, Ananias and Safari, what they supposed to present it to God, they withhold it back. And that's what leads to their deaths. Don't let devil to tempt you that you fall into the temptations. Especially when God is leading. Especially when you have the Holy Spirit. Devil can bring something to entice your life. Devil can bring something to deceive you. He can bring all kinds of things to lure you into things that is not of God. So many of you people, you have been lured into adultery, into fornication. Sometimes you see yourself doing some certain thing. It is after you finish doing it. It is after you finish the assignment of the devil, you begin to realize yourself. You begin to see yourself. You begin to realize and say, God, why should I do this? Why should my spirit accept to do this kind of thing? So many of you people, you begin to regret. But why not regret before you take the action? Ikegoro, my brother. Hallelujah. Who knows how to interpret that Ikegoro? I'm tired. Hallelujah. Why don't you resist the devil before you go into that? It's only after you begin to regret. Praise the Lord. But God wants you to maintain and keep on resisting. Keep on rejecting. Keep on refusing him. Keep on refusing it. Let it start from your mind. Don't give devil rooms. Don't give temptation rooms to swallow your destiny. Is somebody hearing me? I pray that the Lord will help you. Satan tried to entice Jesus in that Matthew chapter 4 by showing him all the glory of the earth. But Jesus said to him, get behind me. Hallelujah. Say, get behind me. Say, Satan, get behind me. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, I've said this to you, that in me you will have peace. But in the world that you are, you will have a lot of tribulations. You will have a lot of temptations. Jesus has said it to us. But for us to escape, for us to maintain a life that the devil will not get advantage to us, we must be in Christ. When we are in Christ, we have peace. Praise the Lord. When we are in Christ, we have the opportunity to escape the scheme of the devil. When we are in Christ, we have the opportunity to refuse and to reject the devil. To resist him. But if we are far from Christ, it is impossible. Hallelujah. It is what? Impossible. Number two, destruction. Say destruction. Say destruction. Destruction is one of the powerful schemes of the devil. It's one of the powerful ways that the devil tries to disconnect people from faith. Devil does not want you to achieve that plan. Remember the Lord said, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans and I know the thought which I think towards you. They are not of evil, but they are of what? Of good. Now, there is a plan of God for you. But that plan, the devil does not want you. The devil does not want you to achieve that plan. When you see somebody all the time, you are experiencing temptation, troubles of life, struggling, family issues, family trouble. There is something that the devil that he has seen in your front. Are you with me? Devil does not fight you. He fights against your destiny. He fights against that thing. That thing that is in your front. He wants to drag it from you. He wants to deny you from it. He wants to make sure that that thing will not reach you. He wants to make sure that the inheritance will not come to you. He wants to make sure that that blessing will not come. Hallelujah. That 
is the plan of the devil. He went to deny you your place. It said destruction. The devil will always bring something to take you away from the plan of God. He can cause fear and troubles. Matthew chapter 14 verse 28 to 30. Lord, if it is you, Peter said to Jesus, command me to come to you on water. Verse 29. And Jesus said to him, Peter, come, get down out of the boat. And Peter started walking on the water towards who? Towards Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw the strength of the wind, when he saw how the wind was shaking everywhere, before he was focusing on Jesus, Jesus was afar. And Jesus was walking on the surface of what? Of water. He saw Jesus. Master, can I come? Can I walk the way, same way you are walking? Can I come to meet you walking on the surface of the water as you are walking? And Jesus said, come. When Jesus said, come, there is power that is already carrying Peter. Praise the Lord. But when, when he was walking towards Jesus, there was room. The thing was working. Hallelujah. The system was working. The business was going on. Somebody hearing me? The transaction was moving. Hallelujah. And as they were moving, as Peter was moving, moving, but there was noise. Wind everywhere shaking. Instead of him to keep focusing until he get to where Jesus was, he looked back. Immediately he looked back. The eyes was cut off from where? From Jesus. And immediately he began to walk to sink. That means in our life, each time we lost focus, each time we are no more focusing in God, each time we are no more concentrating anymore, each time that we lost the hope, each time we are not anchoring our faith in God anymore, that's the time we begin to draw down. We begin to drop down. Business begin to drop down. Finances begin to drop down. Everything that surrounded us, they begin to drop down. Hallelujah. Peter began to sink. But thank God he shouted. He said, Jesus, help me. Hallelujah. Jesus is here to help you out today. I said Jesus is here to help you out today. Are there anybody in the house that need the help? Are there anybody in the house there is a trouble that surrounded you? There is sorrow. There is depression. There is tears. There is pain. There is failure. There is disappointment. I am here to speak into your life that there is help today. Jesus is helping you today. Jesus is helping you today. Jesus is helping you out today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. God wants to help you. Praise the Lord. You can't come to the presence of God and your life remain the same. Your life remain the same. There are many you have been coming. But I tell you too, it doesn't matter how many times you have been coming. Your coming is not what matters. What matters now is the day that God has said. And I believe today God will set you free. God will, 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 will set you free in the name of Jesus. God will cause his face to shine upon your life. And he will help you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Then when you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 25. He said keep your eyes straight ahead. And ignore every side word distraction. Ignore every side destruction. What does that mean? God wants you to ignore every side word destruction. Every side destruction. Look straight to God. Keep your eyes focused. Do not be discouraged. Do not be distracted. Don't let people to distract you. And don't let circumstances to distract you. Hallelujah. 
Destruction is a powerful tool, but I pray that God will deliver you from destruction in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, accusation. The devil is very, very good at accusing. The Bible says he is accusers of what? Brethren. The accusers. The accusers. He wants to accuse you, but no matter that he wants to accuse you, but the God that you serve, will vindicate you in Jesus' name. Amen. The devil wants to use your past life, your errors, your mistake to accuse you. Let me tell you one thing. When you see people that have been accused, there is no woman that is perfect. I want you to understand that. Are you with me? No woman being on earth that is perfect, no matter who you are. There is area of your weakness. And the devil will use some of your weaknesses to accuse you. Accusation does not mean that it is real. People may cast spell on you. People may try to talk you down. They may try to gossip you. They may try to label you and give you all sorts of names. But is that what God said? Job was after his reputations. Hallelujah. But I tell you the truth. Integrity is higher than what? Reputation. Are you with me? Integrity is when you are being approved by God. People say, but God say no. People say no, God say yes. People say yes, and God say no. Hallelujah. Say integrity. Go look at your relationship with him. You may have past records. There may be an area that you have weakness. There may be people who are still counting. They will be counting all your errors. They will be accusing you while you are running speed. The Bible says that even, even when they, in their presence, in their presence, they are still accusing you, wasting their time. But you are passing them. You are advancing further. You are going higher. While they are there, still waiting for the day that you go down. Praise the Lord. When God lifts a man up, as the Bible has spoken, there is no hand that can bring you down. I say no hand will bring you down. Nobody will be able to talk you down. Because God said you are standing tall. God said you are standing tall. He said, I prepared a table before you in the presence of the world. Hallelujah. He prepared a table before you. In the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. Who is that person that is troubling you? That say that you will not live. But the Lord say you will live forever. The Lord say you will stand strong. The Lord say you will continue to be lifted above your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 the Bible said the Lord showed Joshua sorry the Lord showed Je Zechariah Joshua the son of new the Lord showed Zechariah the prophet Joshua the son of new the high priest and the devil was accusing him using his past hallelujah look at it God has chosen Joshua Joshua was with a beauty garment but the Lord had chosen him. The Lord has said that this is my priest. And the devil was still standing by the right side. And the Lord commanded the angels. He said, go there. Tear, remove that garment. Remove that garment. The devil has no right to accuse you. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, he is what? Is what? He said, all things has what? And all things become what? Yeah. That's the life of Christ. Jesus never remind and remember our past. Amen. Those who are using your past to accuse you, they will continue to waste their time. In the name of Jesus. I said they will continue to waste their time. In the name of Jesus. In the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 10 to 28, Daniel was accused innocently. And thrown into the lion den. But God preserved him. And God did not allow the 
the, the lion to hurt him by shoving up the mouth of the lion. And not only that, the accusers, they were thrown back into that den of lion. The king commanded then they should bring out Daniel. And the king made a decree. He said, everybody, all nations, all clans, and all vicinity, they should worship the God of who? Of Daniel. Praise the Lord. And he said, let those who accuse him, those who accuse him, let them be thrown back into the den of the lion. You can see it. So don't be afraid of your enemies. Because all their evil plan, they will use their head to carry it back. In the name of Jesus. I said they will use their head to carry it back. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 39, Verses 11 to 21. The Bible says, As Potiphar's wife, as he caught Joseph, he caught Joseph by his own garment as an evidence. Now look at it. He wanted to lure Joseph into assault. He wanted to lure Joseph into adultery. But Joseph said, How can I do this to my master? How can I do this to my God? And Joseph Run! And Joseph ran. He had the cloth of Joseph. And Joseph left the cloth. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says, Endeavor, try all your best to run away from temptation. If you have opportunity to run away from temptation, run. If you have opportunity to walk away, walk away. If you have any opportunity, whatever that it takes you to defend your faith and to escape from the hand of the devil, do it and escape. Praise the Lord. But Potiphar's wife had the cloth. He had the cloth of who? Of who? Of Joseph. As an evidence. And Joseph was innocently thrown into where? Into prison. Say accusation. accusation. But every accusation that is not of God, every accusation that is from the pit of hell, it is always an advantage of victory and success. Hallelujah. In the prison, Joseph began to dream and interpret dream. The same Joseph that was thrown inside the prison was still the same Joseph that interpreted dreams and still the same Joseph that obtained promotions. Is somebody hearing me? So no accusation will be able to stop your destiny. I said no accusation will be able to stop your destiny. Every mouth that is accusing you shall remain confounded. In the name of Jesus. Number four. One way that the devil uses as a scheme to attack us. Depression. Say depression. What is depression? Heaviness. Sad. Heaviness of heart. Bitterness of heart. Sadness. You see some people, they are never happy one day in their hearts. All the time you feel sad. Depression is a very bad thing. It can harm your health. It can drain your health. Praise the Lord. Let's see something here. Zechariah 4, 6 to 7. The Bible said the word of the Lord came to Zerubbabel through Zechariah. He said, go and tell Zerubbabel that it's not by his power or by his mind. But by the spirit of the most high God. Zerubbabel was depressed because nothing was working out. He was sad because nothing was going on well. Praise the Lord. But when you experience that and when you come to God, God is ready to bring deliverance. And all I pray, those who are going through bitterness of heart, depression, sadness, one thing on the other. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. Amen. First Kings 19.4 The Bible says Elijah gave a point in his life of joining. He became so depressed and was afraid of the enemy Jezebel as he was running and he came to a broom bush. A broom bush and he sat there. And the Bible says the word of the Lord came after he was depressed. Now when he was depressed look at what he said to God. He said, I have had enough, O oh Lord. Take away my life. Kill me. For I have had what? Enough. There are 
are people who are in that situation. There are people who are in such marriage in their life, telling their spouse, I've had enough from you. There are people that whatever they are going through in their life, they can't bear it and they can't take it anymore. Praise the Lord. But the Lord said to him, come down. Go and show yourself to your enemy. For what you carry is greater than you are enemies. Sometimes we feel depressed without knowing that the burden is not of us. We are not the one that will take care of our burdens. Our burden is for who? For God. He said, present your case, cast your case upon him. For he do all, he cares for it. He cares for it. But when you remain in the state of burden all the time, when you remain in the place of burden, and you continue to worship that burden, or that pain, or that sadness, my brother, my sisters, it might lead you to death and destruction. He said, come unto me, all ye that is overburdened, and I will do what? I will give you rest. May God give you rest today. May somebody, may you find rest. Proverbs 12, 25, he said, anxiety wear the heart down. Number five, discouragement. I'm running on. Say discouragement. Say discouragement. The devil wants to lie you. He wants to tell you that you can't make it in life. The devil wants to discourage you. Don't go there. Don't walk in that way. The devil wants to discourage you. Don't serve God. Hallelujah. Don't go to the house of God. You can't get help there. The devil wants to discourage you from the place of light. And he wants you to follow in the place of darkness. The devil wants you to follow the place that is not of God. Praise the Lord. Please put your phone in silence. Luke 8, 43 to 48. The Bible says a woman of issue of blood, they try to discourage her. In order not to obtain her healing and breakthrough. They try all they could, but they could not. The more they try to discourage her, the more he pressed for them. He said, if I can touch the hem of the garment of who? Of Jesus. If I can touch the hem of the garment of who? Of Jesus. I will be whole. I will be made whole. Remember, Jesus was surrounded with crowd. And he entered inside the crowd. And he managed to touch the hem garment of who? Of Jesus. And the Bible said immediately she was what? Made whole. My brothers, whatever it takes you as a child of God, Whatever it takes you to break through. Whatever it takes you to take over what belongs to you. Whatever it takes you to get your breakthrough. You need to walk by faith. You need to go for it. Hallelujah. Don't let any situation, don't let any voice to discourage you. Don't let anyone to discourage you. Don't let anyone to let you know that your life is full of barrenness. Your life is full of unfruitfulness. That is not of God. Praise the Lord. The Lord say you are fruitful. The Lord say you are blessed. In the name of Jesus. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6. The Bible said that David wanted to be discouraged. But he encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. And when he encouraged himself. He recovered what the enemy stole him. From him and from his household. Be encouraged. God is a God of abundance. He has all that you need. And he will supply all. Don't keep focus away from God. Continue to focus on him. Hallelujah. I know we are in the days whereby people, they need an evidence. They want the easy way. They want the fastest way. Hallelujah. And everything that you need in life is all money. Don't you know there are people who are tired of that money? I tell you the truth. There are people who say we don't want the money again. We want health. We want life. There are people who say we don't want the money again. But we need extension of life. Hallelujah. When you go to hospital, there are people, they are not begging for money. They are begging for life. Are you with me? 
He are begging for what? For life. Not money. Hey, you, you are begging for money. You are here every day crying. God, why me? God, why me? Why am I in this situation for a long time? Money, and you are paying your rent. You are eating. Hallelujah. You are surviving. But the problem is that you never drive Lamborghini. Are you with me? You never build hostels. And hotels and the rest, mansions. That's the only thing that remains. But yet you are still questioning God. Why me? Some people will give God a tomato. God, if you don't bless me, I will not serve you again. Remain there, he won't bless you. Hallelujah. Because that is not the statement of every child of God. Amen. Some people use the scripture of Jacob. Until you bless me, I will not let you go. Until you bless me, I will not serve you. Until you bless me, I will not worship you. My brother, that is wrong. Praise the Lord. God is blessing you every day. Are you with me? He gives you good health. People in the hospital, they are crying for life. They are crying for health. Some of them are into oxygen. Some of them, 50-50. Doctors have already announced that their life is only 50-50. Hallelujah. They are only begging God. God, have mercy on me. Give me a second chance. I want to have life again. I want to have life again. I want to have life again. Most of them, they have millions in their account. But they are begging for life. Praise the Lord. You need to have every reason to glorify God. Amen. Is somebody enjoying the teaching? Conclusion. My brothers and my sisters, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. According to Ephesians chapter 6. James chapter 4 verse 7. It says, submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil. And he will do what? He will flee away from you. Job 22, 29. He said, when situation try to cast you down, you shall speak confidently to yourself, to your life, and say, there is war, there is lifting. And I pray that lifting be upon you. May you be lifted above your enemies. In the name of Jesus. Everybody be on your feet. Lift up your hands. La Cotiabra. Every Zendelebrus. Colobro Zendia. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, I pray. Every evil agenda, I'm allotted in the spirit. I'm allotted in the spirit. That the Lord frustrate the agenda of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that is planning evil against you. They are head, they will use it to carry it. They are head from this altar. As I stand in this altar, any evil that plan against you, may it return back to them in the name of Jesus. May they not survive from their evil plan. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands. For I pray for your children. Lord, I pray that, Lord, your children will escape every battle. Amen. Anywhere that devil is waiting for you, the devil will not see you. Amen. God will blindfold the eyes of your enemies. Amen. Why? They will wait. They will wait until they get tired and die where they are waiting you for. Amen. And you will always rise up above them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said, I prepared a table before you. Whatever the Lord has said and prepared for you, you shall be a partaker of it. You shall eat from that table. No one will deny your, your sweat and your labor. No one will deny your breakthrough and your blessings. In the name of Jesus, say there is a lifting. Say there is a lifting. Say there is a lifting. Say I am lifted. Say I am lifted above my enemies. Above challenges, above temptations, above trials, so shall it be. 
in the name of Jesus. I don't know, I'm seeing somebody, a woman, like you are sick. I pray for you whether a wife of somebody here. I declare healing right now. Amen. Every internal sickness in the womb, in the body, right now, Father, I declare healing. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let there be healing. Amen. Let that woman be made whole. In the name of Jesus. I uproot whatever the devil planted in your womb, 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 in your womb. Be healed in the name of Jesus. And anyone here that is having health issue, you are healed and be made whole. Put your hands together for Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, all the fathers wait behind after service. And also those who are grown up men that want to join the, the Father Day celebration, please wait behind. Hallelujah. And um, please package your tithe and your offering. Your tithe is very important. We have tithe in one side and offering one side. And as you give, may God bless you in Jesus' name. I call on Minister Nikki.